Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Squires, the Nurturing Coach, and today I'm going to give you seven top tips for winning in family court against a narcissist. So obviously the coronavirus has changed things within the family court quite a bit. Um, then obviously no longer meeting in person, it's via video call and I'm not getting great feedback. Um, it feels like, and I appreciate that the caseload has changed because of this, but it's feeling quite rushed and people kind of feel like they're on a conveyor belt at the moment. Um, and of course, this all adds to the anxiety around being in family court in the first place. So I wanted to share these seven tips that have come up through all the work that I've done with people who are going through this process. And so the first one is to take a reality check. The bottom line is you are not in the best place for this right now. It, one, we've got everything that's going on in the world, which is anxiety inducing for the majority of people. You can't help that. But when you add that to the trauma that you've already been through, it can make things very difficult, especially from a mindset perspective. Um, you you will have PTSD or sort of elements of PTSD as a result of the relationship that you have been in. And what that means is that the parts of your brain that you need to be effective within family court, the logical and the emotional side, they're, they're asleep. They've had to shut down because you've gone into survival mode. And what survival mode means is that you struggle with cognitive functioning and decision making. And these are all really important parts of the family court process. And so the reality check is all about being aware of that and helping you with those symptoms of PTSD. The second step to that is how do you rewrite the narrative? This is going to be the big key to how you win. Because the narcissist has set you up. They have told everyone this story about the situation and I read quite a lot of position statements from clients and they all the narcissist ones they all say the same sort of thing that there was abuse in the relationship that they don't believe that the children are safe with that parent um they never say I don't want them to have contact what they say is they want certain certain hoops to be jumped through before contact can be resumed and actually they're quite flaky the problem being they use buzzwords so rewriting the narrative is all about how can you retell the truth how can you strip back all of those lies when that person is very convincing actually and are brilliant lies and manipulators how do you get professionals to see the reality of the situation? And you do that by not being everything that they're accusing you of. So if they are accusing you of being aggressive, bullying, controlling, you need to be aware of how you are coming across because to someone who thinks that you are controlling, and I mean someone who hasn't seen you, but has been told you are controlling. If you start de making demands, which are within your rights, but if you start doing that, they're just going to go A plus B equals C, they are abusive. When actually they are ignoring your rights, but it's how you present, how you, how you communicate with individuals. And that's the next part of this, which is understanding how to perform. How do you perform within the court arena? Especially now we've gone for the video call or even just telephone call because in many ways that can be a positive because it's your words. The narcissist loves to put on the whole dramatic performance, the tears, the shaking, the getting 
legions of people to support them in. They can't do that anymore. And so they have to rely upon their words, their words only. So we've taken out a lot of the communication, actually, because verbal, the words that we use is, is only about 5% of communication. The rest is body language, tone of voice. And so there are, there are so many things that you can do to come across as sounding more trustworthy, come across as being someone who is calm, not detached, but response, responsive rather than reactive. And that's, again, that is so important now, particularly that we're, we have cut down on all of the body language that, that you could bring. You are now relying upon your tone of voice and the words that you use. And so knowing some power words that you can use, knowing how to manage the tone of your voice so it comes across as being more trustworthy, so that you um, people hear you properly, that you're not sounding overly excited or overly um, aggressive because, again, that plays into the narrative that we've just spoke about. So that's another important element of winning in family court is how you communicate what you want to communicate, how you get your story heard. And that comes down to how you communicate, which also includes listening and receiving information. The next part is you are going to be triggered by this process. So it's important that you understand the role that you are playing within this. Your ex is baiting you left, right and centre. They are setting you up again. They know some trigger words that set you off. They know the most hurtful things to say to you. They know that dropping a lion is going to bring out a reaction because it would in any of us for you you have to be more self-aware you have to understand where this is coming from what trauma am i going through am i reliving in this moment and become more conscious of how you manage that next up is my favorite particular tip and this is you have to believe in yourself you have to believe that you are super human. You are, you have superpowers. And for me, those superpowers are believing in the outcome that you want, saying so focused on the goal and not allowing yourself to get drawn in to all the like little grenades that are being thrown by, by the X. If you can just stay focused on what it is that you want to achieve, you do all the things that I've talked about in, in the first four steps. You just focus on that goal, whatever that is for you. You stay focused on that. You really feel that how that's going to feel, what it's going to feel like when you, you have your kids overnight, what it's going to feel like when you don't have to worry about handovers anymore, when it's a really positive experience for you. Really feel that and that creates momentum towards where you're going because the, net, the narcissist wants to throw you off all the time so if you can stay focused on the goal not get drawn into those little battles but they totally focused on what it is that you want to achieve you have way more chance of success and the final one which is actually probably the most important is how do you protect the children in this? And it's so important that you remember that they are they are the most important people in this. They are the ones who are being manipulated. I mean, obviously, professionals are being manipulated and you have. But they are sacrificing you. They're being forced to give up someone they love out of the fear of losing someone else that they love. And so it's important that you consider how do you support them through that? Now, it, if you're not having contact, that doesn't mean that you can't support them. It's also about recognising that at times you're not going to like them very much. And that is understandable. When they're saying horrible things about you, when they're lying about you, it's OK not to like that behaviour. But you can still love them because you understand what's really going on. And so that final step, it allows you to 
to really feel empathy for your children and that will really help in the court process because your ex cannot display empathy they'll fake empathy by saying that what they do or the children are scared and this that but actually they can't demonstrate actual examples of that by you being able to say the kid, children are having to sacrifice so much i can't for, for those small vulnerable minds and for their long-term development we need to be really sure of what's happening and and being able to really put yourself in their shoes to see what they're feeling forgive them as well and be able to show that these are all really important and making sure you get the outcome that you want now what i have done because I have seen these themes over and over again, and I know how powerful those steps are in getting you the outcome. I've put all of them into an online course that you can access whenever, wherever, forever, and it's just £47 at the moment because we are going through a horrible time, and I want to make sure that children are as protected as much as possible, and to do that, you need to be forearmed for going into battle. So get caught ready is all of your tools, your mindset, your physical, your mental training, all thrown into one online course. Six modules plus bonuses, 